Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Pawn, released in the year 2020. The movie starts off at the annual China-Korea Summit held in China, where a woman named Xiang Yi is translating the conversations between the two sets of ministers. During the interval, everyone praises Xiang Yi for her work and she seems to be very happy. However, things are very different inside. It's Xiang Yi's first day at work and she is very nervous about it. Hence, she heads to the bathroom to calm herself down. Suddenly, she gets a call from her uncle, John Bay, who informs her that he has finally found the person she has been looking for for the last 10 years. Hearing this, the nervousness from Xiang Yi's face immediately evaporates and she leaves the important summit and heads to the airport. The next scene takes us back to 1993 in Incheon, Korea. Zhang Bei and Du Suk, two retired army officers who now work as debt collectors for a finance company, are walking down the street. It is revealed that the two have no one to call as family, so they still live together, even after their army days. Between the two, Du Suk is the more demanding character, while Zhang Bei is happy to follow orders. Later, they come across one of their clients named Myung Jia and her nine-year-old daughter, Xiang Yi. Myung Jia hasn't returned the duo's money for the last two months, so she starts running away as soon as she sees them. However, she is quickly apprehended. Du Suk and Zhang Bei then interrogate her and ask her to return the $750 that she borrowed two months ago. An out of sorts Myung Jia replies that she is late because of her husband's death. She then promises to pay the money the next month. Hearing this, Du Suk snatches her little daughter away and tells her he will only release her once the money is paid in full. Hence, Du Suk apprehends the little Xiang Yi as a pawn. As the little girl is being taken away, she screams for her mother, but no one in the crowd steps forward. Even Myung Jia reluctantly watches as if something is stopping her. After the incident, Myung Jia goes to the shop where her husband used to work. She attempts to ask for some money, but the owner simply berates her by mentioning her illegal status in the country. Here it is revealed that Myung Jia is a Chinese native who illegally entered South Korea for a better life. The owner also tells her that her husband has run away with someone else and that she should do the same. Elsewhere, the little Xiang Yi is still crying inside the car, so Du Suk hands her a toy to comfort her. Still, she doesn't stop crying as she misses her mother. On the other hand, Myung Jia walks to a phone booth and calls someone for assistance. The person on the other side calms her and promises to send over some money. Hearing this, Myung Jia becomes elated and immediately calls Du Suk to inform him that she will be returning the money the next day. Just as she exits the booth, two officers arrive and arrest her on the grounds of being an illegal immigrant. In the next scene, Du Suk gives the little girl a room to sleep in his place. Zhang Bei wonders what would happen if Myung Jia went to the police, but Du Suk is sure she wouldn't as she is staying illegally in Korea. The next day, Du Suk and Zhang Bei head to their office, where they are berated by their boss for kidnapping the girl. The enraged boss tells the duo to immediately return the girl and collect the money. As the duo escorts the little girl back to her mother, they are stuck in a traffic jam. Sensing the opportunity, Xiang Yi opens the car and escapes from there. Despite their best efforts, Du Suk and Zhang Bei are unable to catch the girl and she eventually evades them. The little Xiang Yi then walks to her house with only one shoe, but is devastated to find that her mother is not present there. In the next scene, Du Suk heads to the police station where Myung Jia is being placed. There, Myung Jia reveals that she is being deported back to China. When asked about the money, Myung Jia gives Du Suk the number of Xiang Yi's uncle, Choi, saying that he will pay off the debt and also take care of the girl. Before leaving, an emotional Myung Jia hands Du Suk a pager along with a photo of herself with Xiang Yi. Elsewhere, Xiang Yi packs her belongings and walks out of the house, leaving a message that reads, I'll find you, mom. After a few moments, Du Suk arrives at the house in search of her, but can only find the note. On the other hand, Xiang Yi walks through the city in search of her mother, 
completely oblivious of the fact that she has not only left the city, but also the whole country. Day becomes night, but her search still goes on. Suddenly, a drunk man tries to kidnap her, but Dusak heroically arrives in the nick of time and swats the man away. He then informs the little girl that her mother has left Korea, which makes her burst into tears. Seeing this, Dusak pities Seung Yi, so he takes her back to his place while they wait for her uncle to arrive. Time passes, and we see Seung Yi becoming more at ease with Dusak and Zhang Bei. One day, Seung Yi's uncle calls Du Suk and tells him he'll pick up Seung Yi the next day. As the time of departure nears, the duo gets even closer to Seung Yi. Hence, they all go out and get her a new dress. While returning, the little girl jokingly gives Du Suk the nickname Park Seung Bo. That night, Zhang Bei brings a candlelit cake to commemorate her farewell, but Seung Yi appears to be sad as she does not want to leave them. The following day, Du Suk and Seung Yi go to the bus stop to meet Seung Yi's uncle. Du Suk hands Seung Yi a pager and informs her to send a message if she's in trouble. He also buys her a CD player so that she can listen to songs by her favorite artists. Seeing the gift, Seung Yi delightfully hugs Du Suk. Just then, Seung Yi's uncle arrives and introduces himself as Choi Byung Dao. Choi claims to have met the little girl, but can't remember her name. Seung Yi is also unfamiliar with her uncle. Choi then pays off the debt and takes Seung Yi with him. But neither Du Suk nor Seung Yi seem happy about their separation. In the next scene, Du Suk can't concentrate on his daily routine as he misses Seung Yi a lot. Zhang Bei suggests that he message Seung Yi, but Du Suk pretends to be fine. He finally gathers the heart to message her, but gets no reply. Concerned, he calls Choi's home, but his wife hangs up, claiming that her husband is unavailable. Smelling something fishy, he tracks down Choi's address and heads there to meet him. There, he meets Choi, who appears to be drunk. At first, the old man says that Seung Yi is living with a good family, but when Du Suk roughs him up, he finally reveals that he sold Seung Yi for a mere $300. However, Choi doesn't know the place where the little girl is staying. Enraged, Du Suk leaves but takes Seung Yi's backpack along with him. Cut to the next scene, we see a lady waking up drunk and asking for water, to which Seung Yi responds by bringing her water. The place appears to be a bar, and the mistress orders Seung Yi to do tasks like cleaning the room, toilet, dishes, and so on. Despite the hard work, the little girl does not speak a word and carries on with her duties. Later, Seung Yi walks into her room, steals a phone, and leaves a message for her mother, telling her to come soon. Elsewhere, Du Suk finds the pager inside Seung Yi's backpack and gets her message. He instantly replies to her, sending his own number, but forgets to send the area code. Hence, when Seung Yi receives the message and tries to connect with him, she fails. At the bar, a drunk man throws his glass against the wall, which injures the nearby Seung Yi. Instead of taking her to the hospital, the bar mistress simply patches her up with makeup. Elsewhere, Du Suk finally remembers that he forgot to mention the area code, so he leaves another message and waits for the call. After a while, Seung Yi returns his call crying and informs about her location in Busan. A concerned Du Suk then promises to come for her and immediately heads out. When Du Suk and Zhang Bei arrive at the bar, they are taken aback to see Seung Yi's condition. Du Suk immediately breaks the door and rescues the little girl, who hugs him tightly. He then grabs the owner by the neck and decides to compensate her to reclaim Seung Yi. Following this, Du Suk takes Seung Yi to the hospital. He even sells his car to manage the expenses. After she is healed, Du Suk tries to admit her to school, but the principal refuses to accept her because she is not a Korean citizen. Left with no other choice, Du Suk adopts Seung Yi and becomes her legal father. Following this, Seung Yi starts living a normal life. She attends school regularly and also excels in her studies. As time passes, the little girl grows into an adult. Seung Yi is now studying at college where she majors in Chinese. 
One evening, Du Suk arrives at the school gate on his motorcycle to pick up Xiang Yi. At the same time, Xiang Yi's mother appears but leaves without meeting her when she finds out that her daughter is living a happy life. In the next scene, Du Suk becomes concerned when Xiang Yi fails to return home on time one night. As he waits anxiously, a man drops Xiang Yi home while carrying her on his back because she is drunk. Du Suk and Zhang Bei begin interviewing the man and find out that he is a good person who will soon become a doctor. Just then, Du Suk receives a call from Xiang Yi's grandmother, who tells him to pay a visit to Xiang Yi's mother, as she is gravely ill. Hearing this, Du Suk and Xiang Yi waste no time and take a flight to China to meet Myung Jia. When Xiang Yi finally meets her mother, both of them start crying while hugging each other. Later, Myung Jia expresses her gratitude to Du Suk for taking good care of her daughter. Du Suk also learns that Myung Jia has just a few days left before she passes away. Before leaving, Myung Jia requests Du Suk to find Xiang Yi's father so that the pair can meet. After returning home, Xiang Yi notices Du Suk's worn out shoes and decides to purchase a new pair for him. Hence, she starts working at a factory while lying to Du Suk that she's going on a school trip. Finally, she collects enough money to purchase a new pair of shoes. Elsewhere, while Du Suk is in search of Xiang Yi's father, he feels a sharp pain in his head, but neglects it and carries on with the search. He finally tracks down Xiang Yi's father, but discovers that he is married to another woman and has a child. Despite this, he keeps his promise and reconciles Xiang Yi with her estranged father. As Xiang Yi is talking with her biological father, Du Suk returns home. He thinks that Xiang Yi will leave with her biological father, but gets delighted when he receives a phone call from Xiang Yi, who addresses him as dad for the first time. She inquires as to why he left her and requests to pick her up from the same location. Du Suk gladly agrees and rides to the same location, but on the way, he becomes dizzy and falls off his running motorcycle. Unaware of the situation, Xiang Yi keeps on waiting. The movie then cuts back to the present, where Xiang Yi is in the car with Zhang Bei. They have been looking for Du Suk for the past 10 years. They head to the place where the supposed Du Suk is kept, but are devastated to find that it is not the same person. On the way back, Xiang Yi notices the same board she saw as a child and requests to inquire at the police station. After a bit of inquiring, the police officer reveals that a man named Park Xiong Bo is kept at a mental institution. They rush to the place and discover that Du Suk is suffering from a neurological disease. He cannot speak but only writes two words in his diary, Park Xiong Bo and Pawn. Hence, they named him Park Xiong Bo. A worker then takes them to Du Suk, where they finally meet him after 10 years. Seeing him, both Xiang Yi and Zhang Bei start crying. Du Suk, who has now become old, does not recognize them, but still has Xiang Yi's CD player with him. As Xiang Yi prepares to present him with the shoes she bought 10 years earlier, she finds out that Du Suk had been saving up for her future. This makes her cry even more. She then hugs her father tightly and promises to take care of him. The movie ends as Du Suk cries tears of joy, implying that he finally remembers his long lost daughter. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.